Testing, testing. Can can everyone hear me clearly? Hey Gary, nice to see you tuning again. All right, Fernando, Deborah, a lot of familiar names. Hey Derek, All right. <laughs> hey Mani. All right, nice. Uh, everyone's coming in nice and early. Okay, okay. That's everyone. All right. Um, do me a favor. All right. Oh yeah, Gary, I can see that you're sending the message in the Q and A part. Right. You can actually try to send the message in the chat box where you can see everyone else sending messages right so um yeah so the benefit of that is that everyone will be able to see each other's messages see each other's questions right so sometimes um yeah it's a little bit more interaction that happens there yeah so yeah oh yeah okay got it got it hey shubham nice to see you lenny nice to see you yamilu yamilu your name sounds so familiar right do you attend my other webinars too <laughs> right okay i got another desmond over here uh, Taifan and Fernando, nice to see you guys. Right. Um, okay, wow, nice bunch of people. Oh, no wonder. Yeah. <laughs> I, I recognize your name everywhere. Okay, but yeah, it's nice to see that you're at this webinar too. Right. Uh, today's session is uh, focusing on Fibonacci expansions and projections. Ignatius, nice to see you. Right. Um, we've got Kumalo from South Africa. Philip, anyone, um, anyone from um from Singapore, Malaysia, or Indonesia over here, right? Oh, why don't you guys um, uh, can share with me like which countries you guys are tuning in from, right? I remember there were a couple of guys in Singapore. Yep, we got Gary from Singapore. Taifan from London. All right, all right. Wonderful and blessed. Nigeria from India, Bangladesh, Ghana. Oh, Fukoy from, uh, from Singapore too. Nice, nice. Oh, Belgium. Nice, nice. Philippines, Nigeria, Mala Malacca. Malacca is Malaysia, right? <laughs> From Ghana. All right. Good stuff. Saudi Arabia. We got a global audience today, right? We got a global audience today, right? Oh, Derek's from Singapore too. We got a couple of you guys tuning in from Singapore. Very, very nice. Yeah. Um, you guys, I don't think many of you guys can guess the building behind me, uh, whoever's from Singapore. But if you do guess it, right, uh, I'll give you guys a prize. <laughs> but yes, 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 this building behind me is in the CBD. Yeah. So if you know, you know. All right, now guys, um, all right, um, quite a number of you guys from Bangladesh, uh, Nigeria, Ghana, that's great. That's great to see, all right? Today's session, right, wherever you're tuning in from, is going to benefit you guys, right? It's a little bit more advanced, right? It's actually on Fibonacci expansions and Fibonacci projections, okay? Very advanced approach to trading, right? I'm going to teach you how I use it, um, the proper way to use it, how I use it, um, and of course, we'll have... Uh, our good friend Annabelle here will be taking over the webinar. Um, uh, probably 15 to 20 minutes in, right? And she'll be doing a deep dive, uh, looking at examples with you and attending to all your questions on, you know, especially on how to, the different nuances on how to apply Fibonacci, okay? Uh, just a quick check. How many of you guys attended my previous webinar on Fibonacci retracements and Fibonacci extensions? Oh, okay, fine. Yes, you're waiting for indicators. I'm so sorry, right? I'm so sorry. I sh I'll get them to you. I, I have a whole list of them. I've just been, been delaying it, yeah. Did any of you guys attend my previous webinar on uh, retracements and extensions? All right, Julie. Yep, she did. All right, missed it, missed it. First time here, I like print. All right, no problem. Very good news is that the VIP room um, went through a couple of uh, levels from management, right? They've approved it, right? We should be launching it very, very soon. <laughs> I keep telling you that. But we it will be launched very, very soon, all right? All right. Oh, Deborah attended. Okay, due to net issue, no right. Okay, so a couple of you guys who missed it, right? Tefan attended it all. Biggest fan. Thanks for, thanks for attending it all, right? Let me just point you guys in the correct direction. Okay, what you want to do is go to tr trading view. No, you want to go to take meal, trading view. All right, I'm going to send you guys. No, I'm here. Take new YouTube. Sorry. Really not functioning, man. Uh, take new YouTube. You want to go to playlist. And the playlist that you want to go to is. I think it's the technical analysis. No, no, that's not me. All right. <laughs> is this is this me? All right. Yeah, this link over here. Okay. This is the link that you want to go to. And specifically, right? This is the first part, copy link address that you want to watch, right? So this is um this is the one we covered on retracements and extensions. All right. So 
do visit it, right? Um, especially on the recap, some of the um, topics that we touch on. Some of you guys, I can see are already asking, how do you register for these webinars uh, in the future, right? Very simply, go to tickmeal.com, client tools, webinars, okay? This is the place where you can watch all our, no, look out for all our upcoming webinars, right? Um, you can see our next one next week is a live trading session, right? So please um, join, uh, sign up for the webinars here. Okay, without further ado, let's begin today's session. All right, let's begin today's session, right? And I can introduce to you, um, of course, disclaimer first, remember that everything in this webinar, everything in this webinar is, um, is educational in nature, right? So nothing should be construed as investment or trading advice. Please do your own little due diligence when you guys trade, all right? Moving on from here. How come I can't move? All right, moving on from here. Um, introducing your host for today, right? This is me, Desmond Leong, right? So I run the award-winning research firm, Everest Fortune Group, and also the Forex Army, right? We're finalists for Best FX Research and Best Equity Research um, 2019, 2020, and 2021. Right, I'll be passing on the time later uh, to Annabelle. Right, I think it'll be the first time you all be seeing her. It'll be the first time you all be seeing her, <laughs> right? And so, um, lend her your ears, right? Ask her as many questions as you can, right? But also go easy on her, all right? It's the first time presenting to you guys, so she may be a little bit nervous and stuff, right? So yeah, go easy on her, right? But also because she's, um, she has dive really deep into um, understanding the ways of how to use Fibonacci properly, right? It'll be a great time for you to ask questions when she presents the live examples to you along with some really, really decent trading setups, which we're looking at uh, ourselves, you know, using Fibonacci, of course. Okay, now let's begin today's session. A few things that we're going to look at, all right? A few things that we're going to look at. You stop using my laser pointer. A few things that I'm going to look at, all right? First is the ideal market structure. I'll be doing a quick recap on the kind of market structure you should be looking at when you're trading. Okay, I'm going, I'm going to repeat that again. Fibonacci doesn't work in all market structures, right? They, they usually work when uh, you're looking at clearer market structures. I'll show you what I mean, right, in some examples later. Um, I'll be talking about the concept of following price structure. Okay, we'll be looking at different kinds of Fibonacci retracement levels and I'll touch a little bit more on what in the world is the difference between retracements, expansions, projections, and of course, um, extensions, right? All these different terminologies, what's the difference between them, right? And one thing I want to share with you guys is that if you take the time, if you take the time to really master this, right, it will greatly, greatly improve your trading. But you need to put in the time and the effort to learn this, right? I've taught a lot of people Right, and this is one of the toughest subjects to learn. It's not as simple as a candlestick pattern. It's not as simple as price action or support and resistance. Right, is there's a lot of um, subjectivity when it comes to using Fibonacci. Right, and um, and please take the time and effort uh, to learn it because yeah, it really really help you be able to call re um reversals a lot better. Okay, one of the key things that people always ask: What are Fibonacci retracement levels useful for? Well, not just Fibonacci retracement levels, but extensions, projections, um, extensions, projections, expansions, and, and, and retracements. Yeah, see, so many of them. Even I forget them myself, right? What are they mainly used for, right? I mainly use them, right? I mainly use them for what we call reversal trading. Some of you guys are more familiar with the term contrarian style of trading, right? So imagine we find everything lining up over here and price is kind of just on its way down, right? There are two kinds of style to, styles of trading that people trade. There are the reversals and there are the breakouts, okay? There are the reversals and the breakouts. When it comes to Fibonacci, we are usually playing the reversal. We're looking for the reversal, not the breakout, okay? Very, very important uh, point of consideration here. You'll be glad to know that Fibonacci also are, is one of the few indicators out there which are called leading indicators, okay? Because in the realm of trading, there is two kinds. There are lagging indicators, right? And there are leading indicators, okay? Lagging indicators, right? Some of you guys are, might be familiar with, they are like the moving averages, 
right? They are, you know, support and resistance. There are trend lines, right? There are stuff like even the stochastic RSI, right? Those are lagging indicators, right? They, they take what the market has told you and they interpret it from there. Very few indicators fall into leading indicators, okay? And Fibonacci is one of the very, very few of them that falls into leading indicators. That means you can literally forecast where price might go to and reverse from. Very few other indicators can do that. Very few, a lot of indi indicators require this thing called confirmation, right? That means, all right, we have a, uh, if you are using price action, right? We have, uh, maybe we have a doji over here. You need a confirmation bar before you can decide whether it's price will go up. So a lot of strategies, a lot of indicators require confirmation. But the great thing about Fibonacci is that it is leading, right? So it's one step ahead, sometimes even two steps ahead of the market. Okay, now let's touch on really quickly on the ideal market structure, right? One of the key things I want to tell you guys is that when it comes to using Fibonacci, you are looking for um, clear market structure, right? Looking for clear market structure. This thing over here is very, uh, is very messy. Okay, it's very messy. The market structure here is not very good. You're looking instead, right? You're looking instead for this kind of market structure, right? Looking for the big moves, Big move down, big move up, big move down, big move up. These are the clear market structures that you want to look, look out for. And I know a common question that I have is what time frame should you use Fibonacci on? Okay, what time frame should you use Fibonacci on? Um, it tends to work better on the higher time frames, right? But more strictly speaking, it works better when the price structure is very clear. Let me pull up a really quick example to show you what I mean, okay? We can look at a chart here and let's just say we look at, we look at pound Aussie, okay? We look at pound Aussie over here. You take a look at this pound Aussie chart. Take a look at the price movements, okay? Can you see that there are a lot of weeks, even in between there are a lot of weeks everywhere. Right, the chart movement is just not clear. Right, there's a lot of weeks, a lot of indecision everywhere. Now, just take a mental picture of how this looks like. All right, when I change to something like euro dollar, look at the movement over here. Can you see that the, the, the movement of prices of the bars they are a lot cleaner versus something like pound Aussie, where you know, in some sense, you know, there's a lot of weeks um, that occur in between all the different bars, okay? So this tends to happen on the lower time frames. This tend to happen on the more exotic currencies, so among the, the crosses. If you go on the Euro dollar, you know, even look at popular ones like Euro yen, the movement is pretty good, right? You can notice that the movement is pretty clear, right? But when you go on to stuff like Pound, um, pound Aussie, right? Pound Kiwi, if you look at this, you know, look at the charts here. They have, the movement is just not as nice. All right, so that answers two big questions on which time frame to use, preferably the higher time frames. I don't even need to go down to the to the five minute time frames, right? To let you see that you know this kind of weeks will really really throw your trading strategy out of the window, right? And of course, you're also looking uh, to trade the the more stable kind of currency pairs, the more popular crosses, right? The yen crosses, the Aussie crosses, but if anything with pound kiwi and euro Aussie, that kind of stuff, not that great, okay? Not that great. Now, I'm just going to touch on a, uh, a few more things, right? So we're definitely looking for the significant swings, all right? Name. Okay, what's it? Um, what you want to do next is you want to follow the price structure, Right, I have no idea why the gaps over here. Right, we are for the price structure. Okay, we are focusing on this word price structure. What I mean by price structure is very clear. Okay, let's look at the movement over here. Right, when you draw a Fibonacci retracement, you notice that there is this little dotted red line. Okay, that is what we call the Fibonacci trend line. The Fibonacci trend line needs to follow price closely. Okay, let me repeat that again. The Fibonacci trend line needs to follow price closely. In this case, it doesn't follow price closely because this is the movement of price. What do I mean by price, uh, by following price closely? It's like this. 
right? You can see how price, you know, it follows uh, the reach, this level, it follows price really closely. The more closely it follows price, the better it's going to perform. Okay, let me repeat that again. The more closely the Fibonacci trend line follows price structure, the better it's going to perform. All right, many times people, just because they, they are told to pick a swing high and a swing low, they, they draw their Fibonacci like this. You know, they just take it from one level and just draw it to another level. They don't realize that the in-between movements are very, very important. The trend line, the Fibonacci trend line needs to follow price structure. Okay? Now, um, really quickly, last few minutes here I'm going to touch on are the different kind of Fibonacci levels. Okay? Different kind of Fibonacci levels. Okay, now when you draw a Fibonacci retracement, you'll notice a few things, right? You'll notice the levels between 0 to 100%. Then you'll notice the levels that go beyond 100%. And you'll notice the levels that go below, uh, below 100%, uh, basically below 0%, right? So that's the amazing thing if, you, if just using this tool called a Fibonacci retracement, just using it by itself, you can get retracements Anything that goes above 100%, like let's just say we come all the way down here and it goes beyond 100%, this goes into the range of Fibonacci extension, right? If it retraces minimally 50% and it comes all the way down here into the negative region, this is what we call Fibonacci expansion. There's one important rule that you need to know here when it comes to Fibonacci expansion. All right, guys? I'm going to draw it out for you. When you're drawing Fibonacci, when you're doing a Fibonacci retracement, okay, this is a high point, this is a low point, okay? My starting point is from here, and I'm coming all the way down. For Fibonacci expansion to work, okay, this is a tip that you won't learn out there, right, um, in many of the other guides, because people think that you can randomly use the negative 27. This negative 27% Fibonacci expansion only works when price reaches anywhere from the 50% to the 100%. That means price needs to minimally retrace up to the 50%. The moment it touches this level over here, this becomes valid and you can start looking for the movement. That means then you can start looking for price to come down to bounce off. Okay? If price only retraces to the 23 or 38% and then comes down here, it is not going to work. It is less effective. Okay? That's an important thing to consider. This is one of the rules that is not documented that well out there, but you need price to minimally come to the 50 to the 100% first. It needs to come here before coming down. It should not cross, go beyond 100%. So this is the upper limit and this is the minimum limit. Okay? Price needs to come somewhere in between this limit for Fibonacci expansions to work, okay? Now, um, important consideration, right? Uh, there was one thing I wanted to show you guys. Uh, 0, 50%, 50, 100%. Uh, yeah, I think that was, uh, that was the main thing I wanted to show you. Was it? Did I miss anything? No, no, I didn't miss anything, yes. So yeah, you need price to minimally retrace 50, anywhere from the 50 to 100% before this level becomes effective. One trick to look out for, right? One trick to look out for when it comes to Fibonacci, right? You're looking for this little uh, Fibonacci expansion. You're looking for this little zigzag, okay? You just need to search for Harry Potter's scar, okay? And you notice, right? It is exactly um, the pattern that you're looking for, all right? This Harry Potter scar, okay? Sometimes um, in our future webinars, we might refer to it, Harry Potter scar and stuff like that. Or sometimes it's the flash, I think it's the Flash logo. It's the old school Flash logo, not the, not the new one. The new one has too many <laughs> lines. It's the old school kind of Flash logo if you ever want to refer to it. Okay? But yeah, this is the kind of movement you're looking for and this is the kind of movement. Okay? When it comes to looking for Fibonacci expansions. There's a lot more to um, dive into explaining how Fibonacci expansions work and it'll be a lot easier when you're looking at examples. Okay, so I'll be passing the time on now, right, to our dear Annabelle. Please lend her your ears.
right? Go easy on her, of course, right? And she will she'll be taking the time to explain to you, you know, um, how to apply this in, especially when looking at charts, right? And of course, showing you some really, really nice setups that we've identified ourselves, okay? Um, okay, I'm going to pass some time to Annabelle. Hi, guys. Hi, nice to see you. I'm Annabelle. Enjoy. Yeah, thanks. So I need to thank Desmond for taking half the webinar. Hi. Okay, so I shall continue with where he stopped. Maybe let me do the recap here. Okay, hi, Jamilu. So it's my first time seeing you guys. So feel free to ask me any questions if you have. I have another screen that I can see all the questions. Okay, so what I have learned in Fibonacci retracement is like what Desmond has um, just mentioned. It's one tool, but there are so many other usage for it. For example, um, anything that is above 100% at 127 is called the extension. But what we are learning today is what is below 0%, the negative zones, which are the expansions. Okay, so Fibonacci levels above 100%, how it works is when you draw your normal Fibonacci retracement, prices usually retrace between 0 to 100. Anything that surpasses the 100% level will not be called a retracement. It is called a extension. So anything that is above 100% is called an extension. Um, this will be covered. This has already been covered in the previous session. Um, sorry. Um, Jane, not able to attend any webinar before this. Can I join? Okay, for Jane, um, they are recorded, recorded webinars that you can find on um, the website. I will show you later. So this is also a recorded webinar, so you will be able to view it again. Yeah. Okay, so sorry, Fibonacci above 100%. So these are extension, which we already covered in the previous session. So for Jane, if you want to revise, um, there are other webinars you can look at for extensions. Okay. So what we are learning today is Fibonacci expansion. Yeah, I know it's slightly confusing because it's extension and expansion. Um, but just remember that anything below zero is called expansion. Okay, so prices not necessarily always go this way, which is the tick extension, but sometimes it might also go the other way, depending on how the market moves. So if your prices breaks this level and go into the negative zone. This is where we catch the reversal and this is called the Fibonacci expansion. In the following few slides, I will show you guys how it works and how you can actually find your flash or zigzag. So it can be a flash or it can be an inverted one. But I think the key to Fibonacci is being able to identify and draw it correctly. If not, it, will, it won't be accurate in, in, um, in identifying where your entry point or exit point should be. Elvin, what is the relevance of the extension? How can it be cached? Sorry, I don't understand what you mean. How can it be cached? Maybe you can explain a bit more. Okay, now I will give you an example. This should be GBP. Yes, this is the GBP chart. Um, I have taken some time to screenshot some charts that I have previously seen it work, previously seen the expansion work very nicely. So these are just examples that can help you simplify the, to understand it easily before I move on to the live charts. Yeah. Okay, so for Fibonacci expansion, which is what we are learning today, I have two important tips that I will 
leave you guys with. Number one is you have to spot the flash. This is what we are looking for. The zigzag is very important. That's number one. And number two, it always have to retrace at least 50% or more. These are the two key levels, um, two key important points that you should take note before you use the Fibonacci expansion. So in this example, this is a GU pair on a one hour time frame, if I remember. What we are looking for is you draw your retracement, right? Your Fibonacci, Fibonacci retracement. It has to retrace more than 50%. So anything that touches here and go beyond, then you can start to look out for your Fibonacci expansion. So once it retraces more than 60% and it comes back here, so retrace more than 50%, and it shows signs of reversal this way. This is a zigzag. You can start looking for your reversals. So this is what we call a Fibonacci expansion. Uh, Ibrahim, please can this technical analysis done on Android? Um, Yes, I'm sure you can, depending on what apps you use. But I would think if you want to chart um, accurately, a desktop would be more apt. Because on your phone, it's a bit too small. For usually, like, like Desmond mentioned, if you want to chart an accurate uh, Fibonacci retracement, time frame um, H4 and H1 would be accurate. So you need like a wider screen to see it. So yes, the two points, the two important points is retrace more than 50% and then pulls back forming the zigzag. This is when you can take note of this level, the expansion levels. So what expansion levels are for is to catch reversals. So meaning to say, if point touches this, most likely it will reverse. Obviously, Expansion tool doesn't work alone. It has to work with other um, indicators like your extension projections, which I will cover later. All together, they will, they will form a zone called the confluence zone where it makes your entry more defined and you can actually fine tune with other indicators as well. Yeah. Okay, another example is also GU. So right here, can anyone tell me what we are looking for? The two important points. Two important points, yes. Okay, to draw, to draw the, the Fibonacci retracement and look for, yes, correct. Shankar, yes, correct, Flash. Okay, yes. So number one, we have to draw the retracement. Okay. Number two, it has to touch at least, yes, must bounce, correct, Daniel, um, must retrace at least 50% before you can actually look at this. So what I want to um, emphasize here is, give me one sec, let me erase. Okay, what I want to emphasize is, some people might be wondering how come retrace 23% or 38% don't really work. Because for so many times that we have tested, right, <clears throat> the 23 and 38% usually is just like a continuation of the trend or price action. It doesn't necessarily mean that it's um, retracing or doing a reversal. So it could just be another continuation of price. So for it to work more accurately, we usually look for a retracement of more than 50%. It could also be 100 depending on where the current market is going. So, retrace at least 50% and comes back up. So, usually about this level when it's at the 0%, I will start to take note because this is when your flash is formed. So, at this level, 
maybe you can set alerts or whatever. Um, you start to take note. Once it hits here, prices tend to do a reversal. So you can place your sell entry there. Stop loss, usually I'll put somewhere slightly above, um, depending on what's your risk tolerance. Okay, we have a question. Uh, is it true we need to pull the Fibonacci from swing point to another swing? Okay, uh, Krishna, yes. Four. Okay, to draw a Fibonacci, maybe let me... Okay, later I will show you on the live chat because um, it's a bit confusing now. I will draw, uh, I'll refresh or recap how to draw a Fibonacci uh, retracement on the live chat later on. Yeah, uh, Krishna. Okay, so yes, uh, like I mentioned, once it passes a zero, I'll start to take note of um, the currency pair. And once it touches the negative 27.2, I will look for a reversal. Yeah, it doesn't always necessarily bounce off here, but this is the one that we have tested many, many times and it always bounces off this uh, instead of this. These two are also reversal levels. So it is depending on how strong the trend is. Yeah. So what I'm saying here is that it doesn't always have to be a negative 27.2. It could bounce off a 61.8 as well. Depending on where your confluence, confluence zone is. Okay. Okay, this is a... Oh, this is a... Yeah, this is where what we saw just now. Okay, so we're looking for the reversal here. So price, retrace, 50%, touch my zero. I will take note here. Comes here, price reacted off, sell. My take profit is usually at my 0%. So it's really depending on your risk appetite. It could even go further. Yeah. Or you can put a, a, a trailing profit, profit taking levels depending on how, how you want to do it. Okay, next example, I have a USD Swiss franc. So again, retrace must be at least 50% before you keep a lookout. So maybe I'll give you the third tip. So Tip number one, retrace 50%. Tip number two, it always forms the zigzag. You can see this line. Tip number three is, I will always look out for this level as well. My zigzag has to touch the zero and then pass it before any trades can be done here. Because technically, the chart could have went the other way, meaning to say it could have just came here, retrace 50, 60%, come here, and then go this way. This is an invalid expansion. Let me highlight, this is an invalid. If it comes this way, we trace 50% and then it makes a swing low and goes the other way. So this is an invalid expansion. Anonymous, okay. What is really the use of FIB? Okay, so maybe you have missed the front portion, uh, Fibonacci levels are used to catch reversal points. So meaning to say, uh, my Fibonacci expansion, which is what we are learning today, this is the highlighted zone that we are looking at. So when prices comes here, we are looking for a reversal, meaning to say price will go the other way. So this is a bearish trend. We are looking for a buy. So if it's a, let me find an example. Okay, if it's a bullish trend, we are looking to sell. So we are looking to reversal. We are looking for a reversal. Fibonacci tool is used to catch reversal points. So this will help you to fine tune your entry, sell entry or buy entry levels. Because most of the time it would reverse. And it has to, obviously it doesn't, doesn't mean that this, works 100% of the time, but if it is used correctly and with other tools like your extension projection, it's, it worked 99% of the time. 
Yeah. So I hope I've un, um, answered the question. Yes, it's for reversal, not continuation. Yeah. So like I've mentioned, my tip would be retrace. Sorry. Let me erase this. Okay. My tip is reverse at least 50%. Sometimes it could go to 100, you don't have to worry. At least 50% and show signs that it's forming the zigzag or the flash, the Harry, Harry Potter scar. Touches this level and breaks. And then I will take note. So you see, it fulfilled. So it zigzag. Harry Potter scar, touch my minus 27.2, reverse. This is my take profit. This is my buy. Stop loss, slightly below, depending on your risk appetite. Yeah. Okay. Uh, I also want to highlight. Um, okay. So, for example, this. Let me raise. Okay. For Fibonacci, right? I, I want to highlight this again. Reverse 50%. 60%, 70%, 100%. This will still work if it comes back here. Yeah. It's still a zigzag, but a big one. But I have a question for my audience. Uh, if you guys are nice enough to answer. If let's say my price came here, reverse 100, maybe slightly more, 127. And comes back. Does this work? Yeah, really, no, no, no. Okay, I see a lot, no? This is very good. Yes, it doesn't work. This is out. Yes, invalid, yes. Okay, thank you for answering. Okay, so yes, it's out. It's, it's totally invalid. Please do not do this because previously, Until 100% only based from last week's webinar. Okay, yeah, very good. Um, no, it's answer because if it comes to 100% and pass to the 127, this is called your extensions. So no, no, no. Anything beyond this 100% is extension. We are looking for the Nike tick. Okay, then we are looking at another tool already. This is not the expansion. So if it comes here and bounce off, no, it's invalid. Okay, not valid. Yeah. And yes, John, uh, it's covered in the previous webinar. So for those that wants to check out our extensions, um, it can Fibonacci extension, it can be viewed on YouTube or or on the Tickmill website. These are all recorded webinars, yeah. Okay, so like I mentioned. Three tips. Tip number one, retrace 50%. Tip number two, looks like it's forming a zigzag. Tip, yeah, zigzag. And it touches a zero. Tip number three. So usually with other tools, um, later I'll show you maybe a projection. It will line up and then you will look for a reversal. Yeah, this way. Okay, I think this will be the last two before I, last two examples uh, before I go to the live chats. Uh, Nina, what time frame usually used to know the retracement? For retracement, we usually use a higher time frame like daily, H4 or H1. If you put it on H15 or H30, it might work, but um, to be more accurate, we usually do higher time frame because on lower time frames, it's very choppy you can't really capture your swing high and swing low. Yeah. So the more accurate your Fibonacci retracement is, the more accurate your, your positions are. Yeah. Okay, I'm thirsty. Give me a sec. <laughs> okay, Ibrahim, is Fibonacci only applicable on currency pairs or? Uh, yes, it does apply for gold as well. So long as there's a setup for confluence, yes, it applies to all pairs. Okay, next example. This is also a USD Swiss franc um, example. <clears throat> okay, so here, 
swing low to swing high, remember, always draw as close to price as possible. It can deviate, but try to draw it. I could have done it here, but there'll be some price de deviation. So I usually like to draw it as close as possible to my prices. So my Fibonacci retrace more than 50% or more than 50%. And look for the flash. Make sure there are signs of the flash. Touch my zero. Voila. Short. TP. Stop loss. Yeah. Okay. It doesn't work 100% of the time and it doesn't work alone. So these are just pure examples to give you guys a gist of what a Fibonacci expansion is to let you guys capture the gist of it. So it's more easily understandable when I go to the charts. Yeah. Yes, you can apply Fibonacci on gold. On golf, I'm not so sure, Ibrahim. <laughs> That's funny. Okay, let me go to the live charts. Oh, wait. Let me... Oh, yeah. Today is about expansions and projections as well. I will show you guys projections on um the, the live... Yeah, on the live charts, yeah. Okay, for... Give me a sec for Jane. Uh, if you want to see our past webinars, you can rewatch them on the website. Uh, the link is here. Let me copy and paste again real quick. Here, here, here. So these are all the recorded webinars you can use to uh, refresh your memory. Or if you miss part of it, you can come back here to watch. Um, it's also on YouTube. Yeah. All the links are here. You can scroll up and find it. Okay. Let me go to the live section. Okay, let me see. Um, <coughs> let me do. Let me give you some live examples here. Okay. Maybe we can do a, a UD cat on a four hour. So um someone asked for uh, give me one sec. I remember someone asked about. Okay, uh, Krishna, right? Pull the Fibonacci from swing point to another swing. Okay, how to draw a accurate Fibonacci? Maybe I just refresh for um, Krishna real quick. Fibonacci, Fibonacci lines are drawn from point to point. And from a swing low to a swing high. And also from a swing high to a swing low depending on which tool you are using. Yeah, so, so it can be both ways, depending on what tools you are using. Because for extensions, we are looking at anything that is above the 100%. And if it's expansion, we are looking for anything that is below zero, which is a neg negative zone, yeah? So draw an ac accurate Fibonacci retracement, meaning to say, from point to point, yes, swing low to swing high or swing high to swing low. And then it has to be as close to the price as possible like this. This is a very clean um, Fibonacci retracement. Yeah. So you can see at this level here. This is our expansion. And it looks like a very nice flash. Okay, this is a great example. So here... What we are looking at, this is a live chart for AUD CAT, a uh, four hour time frame. You can see. Okay, this is number one. You can see that we have an expansion very clean here. Okay, at my, it haven't really reached, so I usually won't um, enter my position here unless it's really, really, really close or it has slightly surpass it like slightly a bit and then my projection let me see uh, give me one second to see whether it's 
Okay. Mm, okay, so the eight is not too bad. Okay, this is my second point. And then let's see whether there are. So I'll usually zoom out more to see whether there is a bigger, yeah, like this. To see whether there's a bigger retracement. Okay, 50%. Okay, so this is what we meant by. Sorry, yeah, guys, give me one second. La, well, give me one second while I clean this up. It's very, uh, slightly messy. 27. Okay, so this is what we meant by a confluence zone. Okay, meaning this is the area where we will take note of uh, for reversal. It might not actually reach that part, but if prices do touch, this is where you enter your positions for a short or a uh, buy or a long. Okay, uh, I have some questions John, uh, from John. Which between 50, 61, 78, and 100 have the highest chance to hit? Uh, they all have equal chances depending on how strong the trend is and where the market is headed. So, so long as... Um, hmm. Okay, so long as... Maybe I make this simpler. So long as... Okay, let me clean this up. Okay, so long as you are able to find, let me get the brush. So long as you are able to find this, okay, so this should be a 50%. Let me try 50 or 60%. Okay, 60, 61. Yeah, 50. Okay, so, so long as it doesn't really matter how far back it retraced. So long as you can see this, okay, for example, okay, maybe I chop it off here. For example, okay, now price is, um, you can see this price action where I have this, but I wouldn't know where the price is going next, yeah? So I will wait. Okay, I can see that price is slowly going in the opposite direction and then I can sort of see it might become a zigzag or a flash. This is where I will start to plot my Fibonacci. Okay, and I see that, okay, wow, it's um, past my 50%. Maybe I can keep a lookout. Okay, and then we move forward. Yes, it's still respecting my, my line and my zigzag. And once it touches my 0%, this is where I will take note. So when my zigzag is formed and it touches my 0, this is where I will start to take note. Yeah. So to answer your question, there is no level that, that has a highest chance. It doesn't mean that the more it retraces, the more it will bounce back. It's really, you have to monitor the market. It doesn't mean that the more it retraces, the, the more chance that it has to go to the negative zone. Yeah. So once it forms a zigzag and you can see the shape and it touches the zero, this is where I will start to take note. You can put alerts or whatever. And once it touches, I will short it. Yeah. Actually, this is quite a good level because um, previously when I draw it, this is the confluence zone. I have my... I have my, this is where your extension is. I mean, sorry, expansion is. And then this is where my projection is, about the 78%. And that was also, okay, and that is also where my, Is this too much? Okay, I actually done this. Take a 50. Yeah, okay. You could also have done this. 
Okay, so it's about lining up your different analytical tools and make sure that, not entirely make sure, and to see where they coincide and where all these um, tools are guiding you towards. So at this area here, there were three tools that I used, my expansion, my projection, and my retracement. It means that if price were to go here, it's uh, 90 to 100% sure that it will reverse. Yeah. Uh, see, Sky, say bell, say bell. Did I, um, can you see it? I just bought it again. Uh, mascot, please, will today's webinar be uploaded on YouTube? I was quite late. Yes, uh, Mascot, it will be uploaded on YouTube as well as the new website. So you can go log on to check. Ibrahim, please, where can I find the Fibonacci instrument on MT5? Uh, I'll get to that later because I, I, I don't have my uh, Android device here. Yeah. Okay, I will go to another example. Oh, wait, I realized I have a teacher, guys. Sorry, sorry. Okay, I will teach you guys how to draw a projection. Actually, projection is the easiest tool to draw of them all because it's just a tool that is... Projection is simply a zigzag, but this part and this part is same in length. So a projection, a projection contains three points, point one, point two, and point three. It simply shows where my price might project to. Yeah, so there is only three levels. My 61.8, 78.6, and 100%. So there are only three points to this. But what a projection does is simply project what is here to what is here. Yeah, that is a projection. So these are the three key levels um, to see. So it could potentially be like this. Yeah. Okay, so this is a projection, a Fibonacci projection. Okay, let me go to maybe two more examples before um, I leave you guys. If you have any questions, please, please feel free to ask in um, the chat box um, because I'm not too sure if I have explained it accurately or if you guys understand what I'm saying. Yeah? Okay, I will go to another example. Maybe I do something different. Euro GBP, because just now I have done a lot of GU. I try something else. Sorry. Okay, so number one, when you look at a chart, what I do is, it is irritating. Give me one sec. When I look at a chart, what I do is, I will try to spot whether there are any, whether there are any expansions that I can, I can draw Okay, this one looks like quite a clean. This one looks like quite a clean zigzag, as you can see here. I will try to plot it. Okay, remember for expansion, you are looking to retrace more than More than 50%. Okay. It retraces more, more than my 50%. Um, yes, price could actually go this way more. But remember what my tip were. That expansion, so long as your price, it has to be within the 0 to 100 for the retracement part. But so long as you can see that price is going this way and forming a zigzag, 
I will call this an expansion. Yeah. So please take note, price could go this way and it could touch 100. It's fine. But if it surpasses the 100% mark, then it will be invalid. We are not looking at this for expansion. Okay. So this example is solely for the example on Fibonacci expansions. Yeah. Anything above here is extension. Extension. But today we are learning expansion. Okay, question. Uh, Manil, can you please take the projection again? Okay, I'll, write, I'll redraw this. Uh, Richard, how is use for trading differ for extension and projection? Okay, I'll answer that shortly. Uh, Raman, what any time frame? Usually for Fibonacci, we use H1 and H4. Okay, okay, I'll draw this real quick because we are sort of running out of time. Okay, so prices retrace 61.8%. Yes, checked. If prices moving forward, if you guys are monitoring because I'm doing a live analysis on a uh, Euro GBP. So if going forward, the price comes back and forms a zigzag, you can look to bounce off here. Okay, for example, okay. Let me erase the chart. Give me one sec. Give me one second. Okay. So I think what I was trying to say is hmm, projection. Let's try. Okay, projection is. Connecting three points. Okay, as you can see here, it's reflected off the 78.6. And then now we are looking to <clears throat> yeah. Oh, okay, wow. Um okay, previously we have learned extension. So this Price here also reacts off the one two seven quite nicely, um. But this is what not what we are looking at today. No. Okay. Okay. Projection. So this is the seventy eight point six level, and then we will also take a look at. Oh, well, I have a lot of questions. Give me some time. Um. There are those times when a chart moves straight up or straight down with little or no retracement. How do you use analytical tools such as FIBO to come to... Okay. So if... um I understand what you're saying, but if let's say take, I think G... USD JPY might be one of... Uh, okay, I understand what you're saying. Let me go there real quick. For example, let me go to the day. For example, if you are looking at uh, prices where it always goes up this part here, uh, this zone, sorry, this zone here, sorry guys, this zone here, if it keeps going up, then obviously we don't need to use this tool because the trend upward is very strong. Um, Actually, if you zoom in, there might be some, some tools which you can use. Yeah. So on the higher time frame, it looks like it's just a going upwards, yeah? I can see here. But actually, if you zoom into the one hour, you might be able to find some, you might be able to find some FIP level, levels to draw. For example, maybe this. Okay, no. Uh, perhaps. Hmm, how about this? Okay, uh, sorry, I don't have the time to do this. But what I'm trying to say is, if you look at the day, daily chart, it might look like it's going upward. But if you zoom into a smaller time frame, you might be able to actually draw some FIBO levels. Yeah, that's what I'm trying to say. Okay. Uh, Daniel, our four feet projection, can it be drawn from 
if point C is lower than point A. For Fibonacci uh, projection, the points are drawn point A, point B, point C. It has to be a V. If, yeah, yeah, it's okay. If this is A, B, C, my C can be lower than the A is fine, but not this way. It doesn't work this way. Projection means we are also looking for a zigzag, but with three points, A, B, and then C. It's depending on how far you drag your, like how far you drag your um, C, it will react accordingly. So uh, let me give you an example. Projection tool works this way. Okay, here. A, B, C. Yeah, A, B, C. So this part A, for example, is a 1 to 10 in, uh, in length. Yeah. So wherever I dra drag my C, it can be higher up here, can be lower or wherever. But for projection, it means that the projected part, which is here, will be the exact same distance here. Here to here. Yeah, it just means that that's all. So it's depending on where your C ends up. Where your C ends up. Then the line will be here. So it's just depending on where you drag your C. Okay, I hope I answered that. Uh, Gali. <sighs> okay, yes, I have answered. Um, okay, okay, I hope I have answered all the questions and I hope this um, webinar is, is useful and easily comprehend because I've tried to be as simple as possible. It might be a bit hard to um, understand these levels because there are so many of it, but um, I'm going to give leave you guys with these three tips for Fibonacci expansion. Just keep a lookout for Oh my God. Okay, so messy. Okay, we are out of time. So I need to rush um, because we have another webinar. So I will leave you guys with three tips for expansion. Remember always. Okay. Remember always look for the zigzag. So if you are looking at potentially... Okay, for example, like this, like a like it's potentially going to form a zigzag, you can actually plot a expansion. Yeah. But if price come down like this and do this, then it's not valid. So what I want to leave you guys with is the three tip. Number one, retrace at least 50% or more. Number two, it has to look like it's forming the zigzag and then it touched the 0%. Uh, yes, it has to touch the 0%. Before then, I will look at a expansion towards here for the reversal. Yep. Okay. Um, what are the key levels for projection? There are no key levels for projection. Projection is just a tool to um, it's just an additional tool that we use for confluence. Maybe this one will cover more of it in the next session. Um, thanks. What are the levels you will recommend for projection? Yeah, there are no levels that. Um... Okay, maybe I'll do this a real quick one. For the levels, um, we are not so particular because it's just like. Um, projection forward to see where the price might go. So this is just an additional tool that we use with our extension expansion to create the confluence zone. Yeah. Um, okay, to um, answer Ahmad, how big should a confluence zone be? It's not about whether the zone is big or not. What we meant by confluence zone means that 
all our levels are coincide. All our levels are near or lining up together with each other to make the entry point a strong one. That's all a confluence means. Means all the levels of my extension, expansion, projection all line up at one point to make it a strong reversal area that we'll look at. Yeah. Okay. I have come to the end of the session. I've overrun um, and I need to rush off. I hope this um, session has been um, good and understandable. So leave some comments or um, any, of, any further questions. I will take it offline. Um, I'll see you guys in the next session. And thank you guys for being such good audience. So this is my first, but might not be my last. I'll see you guys um, next week. Yeah, thank you so much. Thank you.